guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to use Devise with the brand new Turbo JS from Hotwire. It's actually really simple to do this, but Hotwire has a few things that you might not expect. So for example, TurboLinks previously just handled links and made Ajax requests for those, but now it will also take over all of your forms in the new version called Turbo. And that is a little bit problematic because of the way that it needs to support mobile. So when you submit a form, you are your browser will actually keep track of that and see if it got an error and it will show a modal if you try and resubmit. And so Hotwire actually um, is set up so that it will give you an error if you didn't redirect to another location when you submit a form. But that's not very good because it makes it hard for us to render out errors. So there's actually a bug fix in master that will handle 400 and 500 responses and replace the HTML on your page automatically if it's included in those responses. So we can take advantage of that feature to make device work with Turbo. So let's dive into our application. Now the main thing we need to do at the moment is to use the latest version of Turbo from GitHub so we can include that new feature to handle the 400 and 500 responses. So go ahead in your package.json, go and replace your Hotwired Turbo reference to the one on GitHub, the latest build, and that will include that fix. Now, I'm using the free version of Jumpstart here, so we've already got a little bit of JavaScript for setting up Rails UGS, and I've removed the Turbo links and replaced it with Hotwire Turbo. And I've changed our event listener here to listen to Turbo Load, and we can add a simple console log Turbo in there, and we can refresh our page, and we'll see that it will log out that Turbo message and if we click sign up, we'll get that JavaScript error from Turbo saying you didn't redirect anywhere. So the way we can fix this is we can go into our device initializer and we can add a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is set up a parent controller. I'm gonna call mine Turbo Controller and we'll just simply define it here because we're not gonna use it anywhere else and it will be a okay um, to do that here. So our turbo controller is going to inherit from application controller as normal, and we want to set up a responder, and that is what device uses behind the scenes to actually do the redirects and the renders, and it basically is abstracting out your regular scaffold responses. So when there's an error on create, it renders new, when there's an error on update, it renders edit, but those return 200 okay responses, which is not something that Turbo is going to like. So we want to actually render a 422 error on those so that Turbo can see that, grab the HTML, and then render that error on our page. So what we'll do is we will define a new re responder class that will handle the new format that Turbo uses. So we'll call this responder, and this will inherit from action controller responder. And inside of here we can handle um, our different format. So we'll say to turbo stream and define our code in there for handling that. And then we'll say respond to turbo stream and HTML in our controller. So that will tell the responder um, which formats we want to respond with. And then our two turbo stream. So inside of our two turbo stream handler, we are going to implement a couple different things. The first is that we want to say controller.render and we want to pass in options, but merge in a formats key with the HTML value. That's going to basically tell the responder to say, hey, let's render with the HTML format. We don't want to look for a turbostream.erb file here. And then we also need to handle the case where there is no template being found. And that is going to be where we rescue from action view, missing template error. And we will say, if it's a get request, let's just re-raise that error. But if it um, is a request that has errors, this is all stuff that is inside of the responders gem. So if you wanna understand what's going on, take a look at the source code for the responder class. Um, that's where all this stuff is defined, but it's mainly for HTML and JavaScript and JSON uh, responses. So we're adding this turbo stream format in to kind of say, hey, pretty much treat this like a regular HTML request. Um, and so we have the 
default action to check for as well. So basically, if you submit a new user with mismatched passwords, the validations will fail and the respond with resource will actually call this and say, hey, uh, there is no response template for create. Uh, turbo stream or create.html.erb and it will say uh, but your object that you gave us has errors and there is a default action for create we know we need to render the new action and so that's where we handle this and so we say render rendering options and we merge in the formats of HTML so we'll render uh, new.html.erb which is the template already built in to devise and we will change the status here to unprocessable entity which is a 422 error so that's going to give the error and the HTML back to turbo in the browser and it's going to replace the page with that stuff using the new version of the turbo JS and then otherwise if it's some other use case we're going to redirect to the navigation location and all of these things are inside of the responders gem so take a look at that if you want to understand what's happening here it can be a little bit um, meta programming ish because it's um, so generic it can feel a little bit hard to understand now there's one other change we need to make this work for the registration and that is we need to go down to the navigational formats and add the turbo stream format here and that basically tells the responders gem that we want to redirect on TurboStream in HTML requests. So those formats want to redirect. But if you're doing a JSON create, um, we actually want to just render out the user as JSON. So this is important so that we get the actual success redirect when you create your user. So make sure that you have that, otherwise you will get a strange error. So let's go restart our Rails server and boot up our app and try to create our user account. So let's go to sign up. We'll say Chris, Chris at GoRails.com, our password. Let's put mismatching passwords. We should get the error. We can type in a valid password though, and we'll be redirected to the homepage and signed in. So then we can go to our account and we can say, let's update our password. If we do this with a invalid current password, we should see errors here, and we do. And if we change the password with something valid, it should succeed and redirect us to the home page. So all of this seems to work perfectly, except if we try to log in and we give it an invalid email or password, it just hangs. And we can see this in our network request. We'll make a post to sign in, and our headers get a 200 okay. And that needs to be something different. So the way that we can solve that is that Devise uses a tool called Warden underneath, and Warden is like a rack middleware that will handle the actual authentication for us, and Devise just does all of the Railsy things around it. So the solution here is to actually uncomment this and add a manager.failure app equals, and we're gonna call ours the turbo failure app, and we'll define that up here at the top. Class turbo failure app, and this needs to inherit from the device failure app class, so we can just override the device defaults here, and basically we want to add an override to the respond method, and if the request format is a turbo stream format we want to redirect so basically on failure we'll redirect back to the sign up or sign in page with the alert at the top and otherwise we'll just call super and leave it to do what it was by default so that will handle everything as we need it and this is just another case where we're basically telling it hey treat your turbo streams like you would treat an html request that's really all that we've done here is just configured device and the responders gem to treat the turbo stream as if it was an HTML request, and then add that status in so that our JavaScript knows what to do with the error response. So now let's restart our Rails server so that we have all that new code and we can refresh our page here and try to log in. We'll say chrisagorails.com and some invalid password 
we'll log in and we'll be redirected back here and that will work. So that is going to give us what we need there and we can type in a valid email and password to log in and we will be taken to the homepage after being signed in. So all of that works correctly there. So the very last thing that we need to do to make this work completely is we need to fix this redirect because it actually adds a dot turbo stream as the format in the URL, which we don't need um, because these need to be treated more like an HTML request. So the fix for that is actually a simple method inside of the failure app called skip format. And it's simply a array of HTML we add turbo stream into there and the asterisk slash asterisk and check to see if the request format to string is included in there and that will do the trick. So now we can restart our Rails app. We can go back to the regular sign in page, click login and we get redirected to the correct URL without the turbo stream format being added. So that's it. We have a complete working device install. We haven't had to change anything in the device controllers. We haven't had to change any templates. All of it's in our device config and that works pretty well. Now I expect that we should be able to add some of these things into device and the responders gem as PRs so that this can work out of the box in the future. But for now, this will do the trick and make it quite an easy upgrade to add Hotwire to your Rails apps. So that is it for this episode. We'll be talking a lot more about Hotwire, Turbo, and Strata, and Stimulus in the future. I'm really excited about all this stuff, and I will talk to you guys then. Peace!